So like I had to answer a call. Continue on. It's the second Ezra chapter 6 verse 7. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Again, this is going back to Genesis, the 25th chapter. Jacob is you Negroes, Latino, the Native Americans. The 12 tribes of Israel scattered uh, in America, uh, South America, the West Indies. And, you know, it says, for Esau is the end of the world. Now, Esau, the so-called white race, starting with the Rothschild elites, and these different banking families are the end of the world. Does it mean the world is going to be destroyed? No. It means the end of the rulership. The, f the, f the final end of these different uh, dominions. The same dominion that you read about in Daniel's the second chapter. All right. These particular kingdoms, they all end with Esau ruling. It says, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So after, hit, after they rule, Jacob, all right, the Negroes, Latinos, the Native Americans, the Israelites are going to what? Rule. All right. So now going back to Psalms chapter 14. Uh, uh, 17 verse 14 it says deliver my soul from the wicked with the sword verse 14 from men which are are thy hand O Lord Yahweh see that so the most I use the so called white man as his whipping stick to rule the planet earth and to punish people that's how come he's going to have this thermonuclear missiles uh, which these blessed missiles are ordained of the heavenly father to destroy the known world and save only a small population Okay, which is also in their goals and agenda as well. See, the Rothschild elites, their goal is to start the Star World's War. That's how come they're provoking uh, Russia. Um, how are they provoking Russia? By trying to get into Iran and Syria. All right, they established something called P PNAC, um, the, uh, the Project for a New American Century. Which was which was established uh, circa 2001, and the goal was to invade seven countries over here, seven nations in the Middle East, okay, and topple them. And they did so with Iraq, all right, by use of 9/11, all right, which 9/11 was no more than a false flag. All this again is the most high theater, and um, right now they're being hindered in Syria by Russia, North Korea, because Russia has ties with Syria. Russia needs um, certain pipelines to. Uh, distribute their oil because that's how they make most of their wealth. So what the elites are doing is trying to cripple uh, Vladimir Putin's um, Prime, Minister, Prime Minister Putin's um, economy over there in Russia. Okay, so what America does is use NATO as a guise, all right, to enter different foreign country, countries. But guess what? NATO, the EU, um, all these different uh, allies of America are going to ultimately turn their back on America and shoot missiles upon it and the land of Israel. Okay, because the land of Israel and the House of Saud are all in league with America to start the Star World War because they're puppeteers of Esau himself, the Rothschilds, if you will, okay? All this aligns with biblical prophecy. Now let's get back to the stock market. It says, um, it says, O Lord, from men of the world which have their portion in this life, whose bellies thou fillest with thy hidden, with thy hid treasures, they are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes, and that's what the Rothschilds do. Um, you had a man by the name of, um, uh, he was a, he was one of the Rothschilds that had five sons, Maya Amschild Rothschild, which prior to being Maya Amschild Rothschild, his name was Maya Amschild Bauer, and if you look at it, this was the same, uh, one of the Bauer families that, um, bought for this guy Adolf Hitler, you can look it up yourself, alright, so Hitler himself is also a Rothschild, and he was funded by the Rothschilds to get in power, which, uh, you know, some of us believe that this guy Hitler, through the spirit, was Alexander the Great reincarnated. But that's neither here nor there. But the point being is this. He was set up by the Rothschilds to start these particular world wars that the Rothschilds may fund both sides because war is a very expensive thing, okay? So what the Rothschild, uh, the way that they got their wealth is by debt-based banking, okay? So these nations cannot afford the means to go to war. They fall into debt. They borrow money from the Rothschild banking family, and then you now become a slave to the Rothschild. As the scripture says, the borrower is servant to the lender. Who was the main lender? The rich elite banking families of the world. Okay, now this third world, the thing with this third world's war is, is going to institutionalize, um, is going to bring forth the use of nuclear weapons, okay, which is prophesied and will take place. So that's what this guy, Vladimir Putin, and these different nations and these different elites are kind of contemplating and, 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 and hesitant about because um, 
again, there's, there's different fraction families of these elite nations that are fighting over who's going to be the next ruling power. Okay? <clears throat> now, going back to the collapse of the dollar, it shows you that what? We just read Psalm 17 that the elites pretty much pass down the inheritance to one another. So, when they're ready to collapse this economy, they're going to do it. The stock market is just nothing but it's played around, all right? They could crash it when they want to crash it. They could keep it afloat when they want to keep it afloat. But eventually they will crash it because that's also a part of prophecy. Um, and let's prove it. This is James chapter 5. Uh, bear with me. James chapter 5, verse 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your, minute, for your uh, miseries that shall come upon you. And you rich men, and you want you uh, banking uh, people out there on Wall Street. You're quote unquote rich according to the society. But now we're real riches. We're going to prove it. Verse 2 Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered. Now it says your gold and silver is cankered. Now when we go into the Hebrew word, there, uh, the Greek word there for cankered is going to be rust. And we know that gold and silver don't oxidize. Gold and silver will never rust because they don't oxidize. So what does it mean? It means that you're. Um, Babylonian money magic that you're using, all right, which is this fiat-based currency, isn't going to be worth shit, all right? Your stock markets, okay, your different interest rates that you're spiking up and down, all that is going to is going to rust and corrode. And the people that are invested in this place are going to realize, I can't make no money in this bitch, so I'm going to leave. And that's how come, as Peter Schiff br brings out, a lot of rich elite families out there are leaving America and teaching their kids Chinese because they could see what's, uh, they could um, see. The road, to lead, the road ahead leads to nothing prosperous for the United States, man. All right. This dollar will collapse. It says, and, there, the, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were, as it were fire. Ye have heaped uh, treasures together for the last days. And we're in the last days. All right. So the riches, uh, you, the FRNs and a lot of our people that sold out, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans sold out to be rappers and actors. And uh, marry into these uh, wicked satanic families is going to come to an end, man. Because riches profit little in the day of wrath. And there's a wrath coming to America, man, such as martial law, different types of plagues, famine, pestilence. And ultimately, after the chip, a third world's war, all right, and nuclear destruction. Um, so from there, I'm going to go to Job chapter 25. Job or Proverbs, whichever one I hit first. I mean, they're Proverbs, so we could um, shed a bit more to see what's dollars. This is Job chapter 11. I'm uh, sorry, Proverbs 11 and 1. A, fall, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord Yahweh, but a just weight is his delight. A just weight is his delight. The U.S. dollar is not a just weight because it can fluctuate. All right? One minute, um, a pizza is a dollar. Next minute is $2. Next minute is $3. So it shows that the value of this dollar is fluctuating. It's a false balance. Now, if I was to take $10,000 right now and have $10,000 in gold, right? So I have $10,000 in gold and 10000 U.S. dollars. Let's fast forward 20 years from now, 30 years from now. Would that $10,000 still hold its value? No, it would have fluctuated. It, things would have been, um, um, inflation would have devalued this $10,000 worth of U.S. dollars. But if I still have that separate $10,000 of U.S. gold, as time fluctuates, and go up, gold will still have its value, still have a set value. See, what you got to understand is the price of oil, the price of gold, these things don't go up and down. It's just the value of the dollar goes down and brings these things up, okay? So when you complain about everything I rears up, everything I go up, the price on everything is going up, that's not really what you should be saying. You should just be saying that the U.S. value, the value of the value, the, the value of the U.S. dollar is going down because it's what a false balance, Okay? Uh, jump into verse 4 now. It says, Proverbs 11, 4. Riches profit not in a day of wrath, but righteousness delivered from death. So the ones of you that are um, preparing for this stock market crash by trying to heap up um, more money and savings accounts and uh, storing food away, all that is in vain. Because the most size is the one that's going to dictate your life and how things play out. The righteous, um, verse 4, it says, um, reading verse 4 again, it says, but the righteous delivereth, but righteousness delivereth from death. What's righteousness? To be righteous. How do you be righteous? To have faith. As it is written in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, the just shall live by his faith. 
when you look up the word just, it's the same Hebrew word there, tazadak. Also, when you read Romans the 5th chapter, 5 and 1, it tells you that we're made just or righteous through our faith. So the ones of us that have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yashah, we're going to be delivered. We're going to eat some way, somehow. We don't have to think upon it. We just have to have faith upon it. All right? Just look at the movie The Road, where the guy was wandering and he found a bunker full of food. Or, prime example, use Elijah. During the time of famine, he was able to be fed. And uh, he was carried for a space of 40 days and 40 nights on one meal through angel food. So these, tip these different, tip uh, different type of miracles that the Mosai uh, uses, he's going to use again today. Okay? In our time. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 28 of the same chapter, Proverbs 11. It says, he that trusteth in the, he that, here we go, he that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. So the who's the ones that's trusting in their riches? First of all, you have to have, quote unquote, riches to trust in them. All right, so these people that have their millions and dollars, all right, that they all these different mansions and shit like that. When this dollar collapses and those different companies that you own, even the ones of you that have gold, what are you going to do? You can't eat gold. All right, so there's going to come a time when all those people that trust in these things, these tangible things, and not the intangible or the incorruptible, which is faith in these scriptures in the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, you're going to see the severity of, of your mistakes, man. All right? <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Job chapter 20. I'm going to read a few verses in Job because the time is running out. And I'm, I have to read Ezra's. I have, to read, I have to read a few scriptures in the book of Ezra because it fits perfectly with biblical prophecy. And that's all we're about here at Great Millstone. If, you, if you're liking this video or your spirit is clicking on this video and you would like to learn more, I learned everything from the apostles and the elders of Great Millstones. They're the men that taught me. And you can watch their videos and the other brothers under the ban banner of Great Millstone or GMS because we're dealing with the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Who are not, is not only revealing the scriptures uh, to us, but it's, it's putting the spirit in us to measure the times in itself dil diligently. All right, and it's our job as a prophet. The same prophets you read about in this Bible, we're them coming back. So I'm with the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, not in in the sense to give the understanding of the Bible. All right, there was a period of time when when the spirit got on man to write it and to utter it. Now it's a spirit of understanding. All right, so the understanding of these particular scriptures uh, has been bestowed upon us, and we're here to give it to you. All right, name of the elect. And pretty much everyone, all right, is you're gonna do either two things, all right? You're gonna run uh, from it or run with it, all right? As it says in the book of Habakkuk, uh, second chapter. Now this is um, Job <clears throat> chapter twenty, uh, verse fifteen. It says, "He hath swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. The most shall shall cast them out of his belly." So these riches that you're heaping up. Now, this is going towards you richly through banking families, that you're actually heaping up gold onto yourself and these different particular riches. You're going to vomit them up, all right? What does that mean? All these riches that you're gathering right now, that the most I have you gathering and hiding away, you're doing that for the elect. Because after, after what we read in the book of uh, Second Ezra, the sixth chapter, we're going to collect all these different golds and stuff that you got hidden away deep down to uh, be preserved through the, through the nuclear destruction. And you're going to also mine this new... Uh, riches. I want to read something for you too. The leads out there. This is uh, Psalms chapter 39 verse 6. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And that's you guys. You're heaping up all these different riches. Trying to control the whole planet earth. All the different oil fields over there in the Middle East. All these different things you're trying to do and gather these different uh, riches but it's only going to be in vain because you're not going to reap the benefits of them. At the end of the day, the elect, the nation of Israel, shall reap these benefits, man. This is Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. Uh, sorry, bear with me. Here it is, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So the, and who's the just? The righteous. 
the, the, the faith, the elect. All right, so the, all these riches that these elites are gathering, the Mosai is allowing them to do it, that when the time comes, they're going to reap the benefits of it, man. All right? Um, now, I'm going to go to Zephaniah chapter 1. Let's see if I can get some of these scriptures in before I go to Ezra. So, yeah, man, this stock market is bound to collapse. And when the stock market collapse, what it's going to do is going to uh, bring in complete and utter chaos in the United States. All right. Martial law, these different th types of things. All right. Are, are prescribed in the Bible or, or written before time. And they are inevitable, man. All right. So that's how come we telling you now the best thing to do is to try to get right with the most high, man. All right. Because he's the one that's going to deliver you in these evil days to come. This is uh, Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 17. And I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men. It says, Because they have sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as a dung. That's some bad times I'm talking about coming. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all of them that dwell in the land. So ultimately, knowing, knowing that America is going to be destroyed, all right, what manner of person ought you to be, as the book of Second Peter states? In whole, holy conversation, you're supposed to be in these scriptures, man. All right? The dollar, the gold, your riches, your mansion, everything here in America is going to be turned to powder and dust eventually. All right? That's inevitable. And let's say you... Um, have all types of riches. They, the dollar has to be collapsed. Why is that? Because the, the new monetary system is going to be that RFID microchip. We're going to get. They're trying to build towards a paperless economy. All right. That's how come they went from tokens to metric cards. And metric cards to your debit card. From your debit card is going to be the chip. All right. The chip is the next major monetary uh, currency or end time currency that's going to be used before these great miseries come upon the earth and ultimately. Uh, the Third World's War. Um, I'm just going to quote scriptures in First Samuel chapter 7. All right, verse 8, that pretty much tells you that the Lord makes you rich. Also, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 15, tells you that um, uh, the most High is the one that ultimately describes uh, discerns how wealthy you are going to be in a society. With that in mind, and the enormous amount of wealth that the elites have, it shows you that they are ordained to be in the position that they put in, man. All right? So what if they're sacrificing to um, different deities on the left-hand side, man? It doesn't matter. Those deities didn't make them rich. The Most High did, okay? Yes, Satan went up to Yahushua and said, If you ask me, I could give you this, these different kingdoms. Yahushua saw America, all right? He turned it down because Satan cannot control. He's not out of the jurisdictions of the Heavenly Father. So these different deities that you worship that go under different names, such as Molech, Ilnana, Ishtar, uh, Beelzebub, Baal, uh, Satan, all these things, all these different deities worship Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. At the end of the day, I'm talking to you, a rich elite banking family, so your purpose is truly in vain. Uh, well, not in vain, really, because it's in vain to you, but not in vain to us, because your ultimate goal will lead to our uh, kingdom. Okay? You're moving to the beat of the Most High's drums. So continue your spirit cooking, uh, your human sacrifices, abducting little boys, popping them in the ass, and shooting them in the head, and drinking their blood. All these silly things that you do to different deities at the end of the end of the day that go back to the same spiritual realm and worship Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, now I'm gonna read these scriptures and hurry up because I'm running out of time. This is Second Ezra, uh, chapter eight. Second Ezra, chapter eight, verse fifty. It says, "For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world." Because they have walked in great pride. And what's some of those great mysteries? The collapse of the U.S. dollar, martial law, famine. All these different things are going to be uh, happening and coming to America. All right. So this stock market crash is, not, is just an orchestrated plan by the elites. They could bail America out anytime they wanted to. They could fix America. They could fix the whole world. They damn near have $500 trillion in assets. They could fix everything. But this is not so because this would upset prophecy. All right. This is not the goal of the Most High. All right. The goal of the Most High is to have them cripple this world, all right, institutionalize the chip, and start a third world's war, okay? And when they escape it, because they're going to be in different shuttles and under, underground bunkers, the moment they come out of it, thinking they're going to start in the enlightened utopia and rule by them and their God, 
they're going to be in straits and fulfill the book of Job. So everybody's moving to the beat of the most high's words. So I'm going to read this scripture and hurry up. This is uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 5, verse 12. It says, Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. So there's different plagues being brought upon Egypt. By the way, Egypt is America, all right? And some of that is the famine that's going to come here, the collapse of the dollar, right? Pretty much all types of straits and calamities. It says, They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting of hail and with fearful consolation. So they that till the ground, these people that are working out here, as the scriptures also say in Ecclesiastes, the grinding shall cease, all right? Grinding shall be brought low. So you're going to be a lot of stores closed and a lot of uh, Fortune 500 companies going under the fucking ground, all right? You're going to see people who are very rich become very poor overnight. These things are going to happen. Um, I can't continue to read on anymore because uh, the time on the phone is running out. Uh, the spirit allows, I will continue it. But again, the collapse of the U.S. dollar is uh, in the Bible, all right? The famine that's coming here is also in the Bible, okay? The martial law, the race riots, which is our uh, description says, the sedition among men. I'm reading out of the book of uh, Second Ezra, and the book of Second Ezra is also called the Apocalypse of Ezra, okay? Which the word apocalypse just means revelation, all right? So these things and these particular understanding of the scriptures, as it says in Second Ezra 15 and 1, which I'm going to read real quick, it says, Behold, speak down in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in my in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So we being the prophets, the apostles, the elders, the great mill, so and the brothers under that same banner of the prophets. The word prophet means to say before, we're gonna speak, we're gonna go into these scriptures, and the Rokaku Dash, the Holy Spirit, is gonna open up the understanding to us. Alright, to tell you the truth. And with that, I'm gonna give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rokaku Dash, that belongs to the apostles and the elders of the great mill, so which you well. And salutations to the whole for the elect out there, man. Until next time, Shalom.